Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and friendship of God's Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind the grace and mercy that brings us together, and we humble ourselves before His grace and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Go away, seer, get back to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, do your prophesying there. We want no more prophesying in Bethel. This is the royal sanctuary, the national temple. I was no prophet, neither did I belong to any of the brotherhoods of prophets. Amos replied to Amaziah, I was a shepherd and looked after sycamores. But 
It was the Lord who took me from herding the flock, and the Lord who said, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The Word of the Lord Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims. He proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord Himself will give His benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. Before the world was made, he chose us, chose us in Christ, to be holy and spotless and to live through love in his presence, determining that we should become his adopted sons through Jesus Christ for his own kind purposes, to make us praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the Beloved, in whom, through his blood, we gain our freedom the forgiveness of our sins. Such is the richness of the grace which he has showered on us in all wisdom and insight. He has let us know the mystery of his purpose, the hidden plan he so kindly made in Christ from the beginning to act upon when the times had run their course to the end, that he would bring everything together under Christ as head, everything in the heavens and everything on earth. And it is in him that we were claimed as God's own, chosen from the beginning, under the predetermined plan of the one who guides all things as he decides by his own will. Chosen to be, for his greater glory, the people who would put their hopes in Christ before he came. Now you too, in him, have heard the message of the truth, and the good news of your salvation 
and have believed it. And you too have been stamped with the seal of the Holy Spirit of the promise, the pledge of our inheritance, which brings freedom for those whom God has taken for his own to make his glory praised. The Word of the Lord Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Enlighten the eyes of our hearts That we may know what is the hope That belongs to our call Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia The Lord be with you. This proclamation taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs, giving them authority over the unclean spirits, as he instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no haversack, no coppers for their purses. They were to wear sandals, but he added, Do not take a spare tunic. And he said to them, If you enter a house anywhere, stay there until you leave the district. And if any place does not welcome you and the people refuse to listen to you, as you walk away, shake off the dust from under your feet as a sign to them. So they set off to preach repentance. And they cast out many devils and anointed many sick people with oil and cured them. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. My first mission-like experience as a friar was to be sent to the deep interior jungles of Sarawak, the home of the Kenya people in Long San. Long San is a five-day Sampan River journey from Miri, Sarawak, or about a seven-hour four-wheel drive along the dirt road tracks made by the logging companies. That was 25 years ago. I remember when I was told that I would be sent to Long San. There's the phrase again, to be sent. I asked, why? I was sure I wasn't going to survive. Being a city boy, used to all the creature comforts in a city, I thought, how would I ever survive without electricity, shops? You basically had to hunt or gather for what you were to eat. For supplies from Miri would come about, maybe if you're lucky, once a month. I wasn't worried about Wi-Fi connection. There weren't such things then. You see, I always saw mission being sent as to do something, to bring skills that would improve the lives of the people, to bring them something they didn't have. I didn't see myself having any skills to survive in the interior of Sarawak. All I was told was it would be good for your formation. 25 years on, I look back and realize it was one of the best, most memorable, and formative experiences of my life as a prior minor. 
and I've survived to tell the tale. When Jesus sent the twelve, he gave them instructions. But while they were told what they were to do or what they were not to do, they weren't told how they would exercise unclean spirits or heal the sick. I don't think any of them was a qualified psychiatrist or had degrees in medicine. So what was this authority that was given to them? You see, if we remember, the authority given to them and to us was the authority from him to move beyond the purity codes that the scribal laws were based on. The scribal advice was avoidance of people who were unclean, who were possessed, to the degree that they separated themselves from these individuals, they kept the purity codes and kept themselves holy. Keeping away from certain foods, certain actions, certain situations would keep them pure, would keep them holy. To be in contact with someone possessed with unclean spirits would render them contagious. When we read that the Twelve were given authority over these situations, we immediately think of them grappling with possessed people and somewhat restoring them to full-functioning members integrated back into communities. In a sense, that is accurate. But the emphasis is not on the sudden and positive change of the afflicted or the disciples displaying miraculous curative abilities or powers. Rather, both the communities and the individuals were urged, instructed to repent, metanoia, to change, to change, to rethink the taboos and restrictions around clean and unclean boundaries, to reach out and bring the excluded and integrate them back in. It was no more to be them and us, but we. Without bread, bag, and money, they, the disciples who were sent, were to become part of the community they were sent to. Their lack of possessions will elicit compassion and mercy that will be the cornerstone of the kingdom of God. Remember in the other versions, eat what is set before you. And in today's gospel, do not move from place to place. Stay there. Become part of that community. Hospitality and compassion and the practice and the encouragement of this will be the essential part of the mission. When I look back on the experience in Long Sun, I realize that whilst I thought mission was to do something, it turned out that mission was to be, was to enable, to facilitate the building of a community where I am part of the kingdom of God and share that with my brothers and sisters to whom I'm sent. I was to learn fraternity, fraternal love, by being with them. My mission trip was not to be a goal, but a transformative experience for me, and hopefully for them, a repentance for me and for them when we realize that we are actually all brothers and sisters, a relationship that needs to be lived where boundaries between them and us were chipped away so that I would live and become and share with my brothers and sisters and gain an experience with my brothers and sisters. Walking stick 
and sandals both facilitate travel and reminds me that I must not be passive. I must be on the move. The single tunic captures the single-mindedness of being a Christian who is commissioned and sent to proclaim the kingdom. Every Christian, you and I, are sent to bear witness. By virtue of our baptism, we are anointed with chrism to be prophets who would speak the word of God. Our vocation is to be a bearer of good news of the kingdom of God, wherever we may find ourselves. And we realize that when we look at Amos. Amos was from the southern kingdom, was from the south. His job brought him to the northern kingdom. And there he was working as a dresser of sycamore trees. Yet there, where he found himself, was to be the place where he was commissioned by God to speak up and to speak out against the degradation of his brothers and sisters there, against the ills of those who were not treating their fellow men and women with dignity and justice. And so Amos begins to speak where he is at. It took me 25 years and a journey away to realize that I am to be a missionary where I am called. And it could be very well right here. Here, in the experience of estranged relationships, in the experience of people excluded, I am to proclaim the kingdom of God and become the message of repentance so that we all will be brothers and sisters to one another. The scribal purity codes of them and us that leads to cliques and divisions are to be exorcised. And I am to act with the authority of Christ, to love God and to love neighbor, and to proclaim the kingdom of God. Now, just think for a moment where you are and how we are sent. And it could be in the very community that we find ourselves in, whether it be at work or at home in relationships that we experience. We are called, we are sent to exorcise the demons that separate us from one another, to bring others into the community so that we all experience the love and mercy of God. And we do this by being that very message that we preach, that message of repentance and forgiveness. May you have a wonderful experience in living out our mission, our call to be on the move and to be sent out, sent to the people that we encounter. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, you are strength and protection. You have perfect love for us. Mindful of this great love, we present our needs to you. For the Church, like the Apostles commissioned to preach repentance and return to the Lord, the Church goes forth as a vibrant evangelistic and missionary Church. We pray to the Lord. for political and secular leaders, that they sow seeds of justice, mercy, integrity, commitment, and care in their leadership. We pray to the Lord. For all in healthcare, that the Lord continues to uplift their morale, give courage and hope to all who tirelessly work and care for the sick, in hospitals, in care homes, and at home, we pray to the Lord. For vulnerable families, that parents stressed by job instability and financial difficulties, be relieved of their anxieties by the care and love from the community and support from relevant agencies. We pray to the Lord. Fill us, Father God, with your burning love and open our hearts to your grace. Help us to realize that you are all we need. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Bless are you, Lord. God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread and wine to offer, fruit of the earth, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. So pray, my sisters, my brothers, pray that your offering your sacrifice and mine here may be acceptable to God, our almighty and providential Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Then let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies, and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick, and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, 
and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most holy, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify this bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers, our sisters, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. 
and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Come also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Francis and St. Clair of Assisi, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, for it is through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but look, look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So let us then extend this peace to one another, be commissioned to be peacemakers. Let us offer each other a sign of peace and bring it beyond to those we meet. Peace be with you.
Behold, the one who sends us, commissions us to proclaim the kingdom of God. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let us then go and proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God.